Our voice, our truth means that we as a people must always use our voices and stay true to ourselves. That's what my next album is about for me. Whoever you are, you're wonderful, you're amazing, and I love you. And belong to yourself and own your truth. ready for this. I don't think so. But let's see. Let's see. Fumbling, giggling, silly as ever. I've been like this after too many, but right now I ain't even been drinking. He approached me and asked for a minute, which turned into five and a turn. Like the girl at the bar who's been there too long Can't stand up and I should be gone But I just can't get enough I'm wishing it, hoping that I don't blow it I'm nervous as hell and I don't want to show it Right now I ain't even know what I'm saying I never in my mind and I feel like a conversational thudge I don't know how much is too much cause I feel like the girl no 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 can I get a breathe Y'all better get a refill <laughs> and go listen to my new music, get that refill. <laughs> and you gon' be lucky, lucky, lucky. I love you. Thank you. Refill um, is a very, very interesting, it's one of my divine songs. I have these songs that I'm like, I don't know how this happened, but I'll take it. Um, it took me like 10 minutes to write, and the beat, Pop Ronzel, was gonna skip that beat. We had just met that day at the studio, and he was playing tracks, and producers always think I want like R&B, like slow. I like hip hop beats. I like rap, trap, lo-fi, like I love drums, and if you listen, to refill, that song knocks so hard. And I was like, whoa, wait, wait what, what was that? He was like, oh no, no, that's a rap track. I was like, go back. There's another layer to the story. I was in Miami in my early 20s and we were drinking quite heavily. We're making drinks, we're pre-gaming, we're about to go to live. And I said, 
Can I get a refill? Like I had just kind of sang it in my sister girl voice. Like, I don't know, it just came out of me. And when I heard that track, the two combined somehow up in here, I learned songwriting from my uncle who was not a singer or a songwriter, but he used to sing his actions all of my life. He would sing like, I'm walking down the hallway or like doing the dishes. And so I subconsciously do this. So I probably wanted another drink. I said, can I get a reading And then here we are, I'm in the session. I hear this track that's making me feel woozy and off kilter and I'm like, can I get a refill? And then also I have this weird thing where like, and I'm not the only one, I've talked to other women uh, that like to extend dates sometimes, like if it's going good or like if, you know, you just keep talking and talking. Now everyone thinks this song is about the bedroom. It is literally about a conversation um, that's gone on, that's so good and you don't know when to end it and should you keep going? When do I take a pause or should I just wake up or walk into the sunset with you? Uh, because this is going great. We've been there, we've all been there. Right? Okay, so that's my little refill story. It began when I was like one or two. I was sitting in my mom's lap. I just saw this on a video recently. And I'm sitting on her lap. She's singing at someone's wedding or birthday. And I'm just like grabbing her mouth while she's trying to sing and like trying to go in there and figure out where the sound is coming from. And I'm just enamored, not like aggressively, but just like when she's holding the mic and she's singing and I feel like that kind of downloaded something for me. And I started noticing the rasp in my voice. Like when I talk, I always felt something. I don't know if, how to explain it. And then I did sing in church. I was probably seven. I got a solo and what freaks me out is I just saw a Jennifer Lewis interview where she said she told the exact same story of her singing in church and her eyes were probably closed and she looked up and everybody was silent and she said, that's what I'm doing. I know, I know. And I had the same literal, I was like, I'm serious. So that's, that's, yeah. I probably, me wanting to be a singer is a couple of things. One, my parents were already singers. They were in a group called By All Means. So I literally saw them like on television, you know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, and I was really young, so subconsciously, I don't know, but I, I saw that and then my parents toured with all, of course, yes, I grew, I mean, I did. Barry White, Tevin Campbell, Rasan Patterson, Maxwell, all of the musicians that play like everything you can ever think of. It was kind of a thing, but then I was very shy at the same time. I kind of fronted in school like I didn't want to do this. And I think in college, I decided to make a point because I'm kind of rebellious. Everybody was like, oh, you should be a writer. You should be a songwriter. I was like, mm, I'm just gonna be an artist. They were like, but why? Cause I said so. Cause I belong to myself. <laughs> I didn't know it yet, but that's what I was saying. Cause I can, cause it's, why not? So I did it. I feel like when my mom and my godfather, Rasan would write songs, when they were together, <laughs> it was like sonic combustion. They were always singing, they were always writing, they were always like playing spades and, you know, loud. And <laughs> I grew up in a very vibrant home and it was colorful and, and full of music. So I would say that's one really 
And I was put on to like so many artists like Shaka and Diana Ross and um, even some deeper, deeper things, uh, but yeah. Stay tuned for the next episode of Tracks and Tales. Perfectly Imperfect, um, it does sound crazy to say that it's 10 years old. For me, it feels like five minutes because I only put out the one album, but that's okay. Um, it has taken me time to appreciate my journey and understand that every day is an opportunity. Every day we wake up is another opportunity. If you really want to do something, and so, I just want to take a minute to appreciate my fans. Like, I'm only here because of them. Like, yes, I made the music, but I could never, no matter how low my spirit has ever been, I will get like one tweet <laughs> or like once a week, I'll go to the store or I'll just be walking down the street and it's like, are you know? <laughs> It, it could be one little thing and I'm always just remembering like you are needed, you are loved, you're wanted and just, just be like, just do it. <laughs> like Nike, just do it. Like do the music, forget all the like, if we take away time, labels, titles, I made a great album and I just made another one. Ooh wee, that's just it. <laughs> and I can now be like, I, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but guys, I'm very excited. This is, this is a whole journey I've been on, like for real. And I made it here. So yes, it feels incredible. Um, I acknowledge myself. I did a great job and I hope I did a great job again. I've got no poker face I'm not designed for this This, this If I could speak in code I wouldn't be so bold But I can't control my lips Lips, lips I've never been subtle I tend to be too loud I'm not ashamed of my words, clearly I'm gone and I'm going into the deep end, far over my head, it's so unfair, I'm gone and I'm showing all over my smile simply by telling the time you got those endless eyes I, I, I could just stare all day and lay there and melt away I'm such a helpless case case, case I've done away with my pride they say I'm out Thank you.
I don't care. <laughs> oh. Mm. That song was uh, another one. Some of my songs are from experience and some are from my observations, but that one was mine. Um, I kind of fell in love with someone in front of people and it wasn't really appropriate, but not for any like bad reason. I just felt like I should not really wear my heart on my sleeve. And like I had some reservation, but I also experienced the thrill of writing that song. Like I told this person through the song, I didn't tell them how I felt. I just said, wanna hear a song? Boom. And then all my adrenaline, but that's, I'm an artist, I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing. I can't explain it. And I enjoy that song like it's the first time. I literally listened to it yesterday and I was just like, oh. it just gives me all of the feels of the music that I love, that I grew up on, classic hip hop, um, you know, the melodies, the cool and the gang sample. It's just, it's an incredible song and one of my favorites that I've ever well, the title Perfectly Imperfect, I actually didn't come up with it, my dad did. And well, he said it and I was like, oh my God, that's the title. Because I wanted to endlessly and endlessly edit the song and do one more vocal. And I thought, only want to give it to you, need it to be sung over. Oh my God, we can't. No, it's not gonna. Like, I freaked out about a lot of things that are part of the character of that album. Every vocal is not perfect. It's not all clean. Um, there's things that I would do differently now, but not only did it represent the symbolism of the album being perfectly imperfect, but me as a, as a girl, I was a girl. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I had so many body image issues. I still have them. Um, it's a journey, you know what I mean? But one thing about me, I will find some humor <laughs> in something and I will find my little sassy way of dealing with it. Um, so if you listen to So Fly, I can't help being depressed when I look down at my chest. Oh yes, my chest it might as well be non-existent. How can I ever compete with 34 double Ds? And I'm rolling my eyes when I look down at my thighs. They might as well tape everything that I eat to my legs. I'm too broke for the knife, too lazy to exercise. But if I had hazel eyes, maybe I could be so fly. Like, that was my thought that day. Literally, I was like, damn, well, guess I'll just have to be myself because that's, that's all that was available to me and that's always available to us. Do whatever you want to do. I support it. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to do my thing. But loving yourself and perfectly imperfect applies to so many things in life so the success that i had early on like right out the gate people think it was right out the gate but i really have been doing music like since i was i started songwriting when i was six like my mom would be driving She's got a tape in the deck or whatever. She's writing a song for somebody, for a, for a publisher. She's signed. She's a real publisher. And she'll go, what would you say here? And I would go, focus or cloud. Like I just, she actually engaged me in a way that, that like, she wasn't like playing when she asked. She was like, well, what does my kid think? Um, so I felt I was a songwriter. She would use stuff. Um, she, my parents recorded me singing. Um, and then I did musical theater. And this is something I do want to talk about. I want to talk about my teacher, my late teacher, Miss Denise Dows. I know y'all want to celebrate with your girl, Elle Varner, on the next episode of Tracks and Tales on Fox Soul.
this is something I do want to talk about. I want to talk about my teacher, my late teacher, Ms. Denise Douse. Um, she passed recently and she was an extraordinary woman, an extraordinary teacher. And I went to a school called Amazing Grace Conservatory in South Central or South, South LA, Crenshaw and Adams. And it was a place for young Black kids to have access to some of the great talent that ever was. Um, Tracy Coley, Cassie Davis, uh, Wendy Raquel Robinson, who created the school, and so many others. Um, that was my home. That was the start of something that I was going to go out later and give to the world. I was going to go out into the world with excellence, with talent, ability, and responsibility. There's a couple of things I can tell you about being a student at AGC. There's a statement, to thine own self be true. I can remember Miss Denise saying this every time, to thine own self be true. I'm 10 years old, I don't know what that means yet. 15, I don't know what that means. Probably 20, I didn't know what that means. 25, I don't know. But today, I'm starting to feel what that looks like. And another thing I can tell you is that uh, she always challenged us to make choices. Uh, when we would do improv, I remember one time I'm doing an improv and I lost it and I started to laugh and fizzle out and she got so upset and I couldn't understand it. And it was like, this is your opportunity. This is your stage. The world is your stage. And we are preparing you for greatness. It's not a joke. Um, and also like, if we were gonna pick a character, it was like, give me something, make a choice, make a real one. So, you know, I'm out here y'all, I'm making choices and I'm being true to myself. And that's, I don't even remember the question, but that's what I would tell 10 years from yesterday, L, a 10 year old L and 80 year old L, I want to feel the same way forever. I should have broke up with my ex on a text. XOXO, wish you the best, I'm leaving. I wasn't with you, so I wasn't cheating. I found a better love that I believe in. She found as hell and gave me all the things that I was needing. When looking in the mirror, seeing her a little bit clearer. Gotta clean all my windows. Sage and Palo Santo. Long back in a hot shower. Think about all this power. Look at this lovely woman. God bless every woman. Could it belong to you no more? Maybe I belong to myself. And if I'm being honest, it's like, oh well, I wouldn't spend another day on your shelf. Could it belong to you no more? I'm out from under your spell. I drink a lot of water. the spirit in your 9-11 and every time we did it felt like heaven thought you would ask me for my hand in marriage you really dragged it like we had a broken horse and carriage but I ain't mad at just no one way no more like 
goes round in circles. Time go knock on your door. Seeds grow in the darkness and shines after the storm. Every day somebody dies, another baby is born. Could it belong to you no more? Maybe I belong to myself. And if I'm being honest, it's like a whale. was written I think the first or second day of the pandemic and here's what's so powerful about this song my friend Jordan Waré who just released his debut album Traplin he is one of the main producers on the new Brent Fias album which is incredible He's been a long time producer and friend, and we didn't really know what the heck was going on yet. But so we couldn't like get musicians to come and like have a session session. So I had never played some of the instruments that I played on this song. I played everything um, except for the violin, which he played. And I had this loop this weird loop that I didn't even know if it made sense because I'm not, cla I don't know theory that well. Um, I just kind of learned by ear and I put things together and I just, but I had these chords, I had this progression. A light bulb went off and that was the song. <laughs> and I wrote these lyrics that I, again, a divine song. I said so many things in this song. I almost don't wanna spoil it. I want you to go listen to it. But one of the main lyrics is, I belong to myself. I couldn't belong to you no more. Baby, I belong to myself. And if I'm being honest, it's like, oh well, I wouldn't spend another day on your shelf. And the album is called Self. And it, it stands for some energy lasts forever. I decided that when I was putting this album together, that I'm already who I am. For me, that's truth. That's owning my truth. And enjoying every moment of this beautiful gift that God gave me. Like, why, why would I not? And so... The one last thing I can offer is like, just understand if you can accept that you're on the journey, I'm not telling you to love it because it's not always lovable. Some, some of it's ugly, some of it's messy, some of it's painful, but on the other side of that, it's just, it's a cycle. Life goes around in circles, time go knock on your door. Seeds grow in the darkness. Sun shines after the storm. Every day somebody dies, another baby is born. Like, I don't have time for none of it. None of us do. So let's all be true to ourselves and live an authentic life. 
Um, that's my message. That's that's what I have to share. And that's a hard earned uh truth and I'm proud of it. And yeah. To me, our voice, our truth as a black woman means that I will always use my voice anytime, any place.
So for me, when I wrote Lucky, it was a time in my life where I was at a really low point. Um, I had had these huge records and all this hoopla and all these amazing things happen. And then I had an album that never came out. Um, I had a lot of things going on with that and my ability to release music at the time. And that's all I, that's all I knew. Like without this, I'm nothing. I can't do, I, this is my whole life, right? But that's not true. I didn't know that when I wrote the song, I was so pissed that the song was like this release for me to actually address it um, without being able to really do nothing about it. I, I'll always come back to music in a way, but I feel like at the time I wrote it versus now what it's become, it's taken on a life of its own. It started with just guitar, a vocal, and like a couple little things. And then my boy Madison comes in and just adds these drums that like I never would have expected. And like, as I said before, so much of this is letting go. Like maybe this is, I'm finally in the in a place where I just submit. I, I know. So this song is a, a gift for me. Um, like I said, whatever the song does, it's already a gift to me. I did it. I put it out. That's where I won. The day that song is out, October 21st, I won. I overcame it. And the rest is not up to me. So, um, love and light, you know, but sometimes we go through things and we got to let that out. And that's okay. It's okay to stand up for yourself. It's okay to speak up about, because you don't need to internalize everything on behalf of someone else. What you get, it's hard to get it and it's harder to keep it. So, you know, you got to work really, 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 really hard. And if that's your way of life, you'll probably have success. And if you're not having success, you'll probably be okay because you know you're working hard and you're moving forward. Please move forward. Don't get stuck, please. The difference between me now musically as an artist, one thing I will say, even though a lot of my music didn't come out in the last couple of years, eight, but I made a lot of music. Um, four letter word was a very, I gotta say it was dark. It was heartbreak. It was, it was a lot. And I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. There's some great records. F it all. See me. That's my whole, they wasn't ready for that. It's fine. But I've explored so many sounds, so many styles as an artist. And I've been so through so much as a woman, as a person, that I just do what I feel and what I want and I don't think about it. Um, I've been so much more open with my collaboration. Um, I don't put the pressure on myself to write every single thing and do every single thing. Um, and it just, I love that. I can do both. I can write the song by myself on the guitar and I can show up and just collab. And that's something I was probably missing before, you know? So the openness of my spirit and like where I'm at in life shows and translates in the music. Um, one of my phrases is, thank God. I got it from Roble, Chef Roble, my best friend. Um, that man, <laughs> Like the Wi-Fi password, thank God. <laughs> this, thank God, thank God. Wallahi, uh, you know, he says all stuff. stuff. Um, but it's kind of true for me at least. I just, if I can do that, 
I'm okay. It's pretty basic, but it literally applies to everything for me. And I still go through all the drama and I have my melt and I freak out. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Hello. Took me time to get there, but I'm there. Too much on my play, girl. A good guy of the fence, a lot of mistakes, girl. An extra love's expense. The sun will shine through shadows and lies that just like arrows through a heart. Oh, 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 oh. I just think it is a lot harder for us to just be exposed to a lot of different people. Our voice, our truth means to me, um, just being genuinely yourself and speaking up, speaking out, being bold. Um, just ex exuding the energy that you give to people. Um, you have to be very careful with the words that you do say, but when you do say it and you have that opportunity to speak up, that is your opportunity to be heard and be um, taken Seriously, so I would say um, just speaking out, being bold, and just doing you, like staying in your own lane. I'm an artist born and raised in New York City. I started doing music about um, elementary school. I was always in different glee clubs and talent shows, but it wasn't until um, I entered the Harlem Boys Choir where I really got my chops up and became a real performer. Um, I would say my favorite era in R&B would have to be the 50s and 60s only because I feel like um, it was just a time where you had to work harder. There was no auto-tune, there was no punching, there was no um, reverb and things to actually make you sound good. You had to really work and sing. Um, and also with the harmonies as well, you know, you had to pay attention, especially being in a group, you know, as far as like blends and all of that. So I would say that's my favorite era. And the music was like real and very sincere. The thing that inspired me to be an artist is um, to just share my gift, which is my voice and my writing skills. Um, touching people, I love to perform. I love to um, get dressed and you know do my thing. So yeah, most definitely just be an all around artist and just express myself in that way. Um, growing up, I wanted to be like Usher, of course. I wanted to dance like Usher and do harmonize like Brandy, so that was kind of my two influences. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, forever. Yeah! Slugger music. Slugger. Yeah. 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 Uh. Too much of my play, girl. Uh. A good guy off the fence, a lot of mistakes. Girl, an extra love's expense. The sun will shine through shadows and lies that just like arrows through a heart. Oh, 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 we should have been a turn to take Forever as they say yeah. hey, see, But talk, forever talk. it's off the table What it was is not now, you're not around me and you out of town, you shut it down. When love was found and you lost that, you're off track. All facts was forced to get my thoughts back. Horseback and Medellin, the red and rings. You dead at things, you should have been my Coretta King. Let it sing, the song speak it, the dawn's featured. <laughs> but not forever's off the table. Uh, uh, forever's off the table. Uh, oh no, uh, and I can't say that I blame you. Off the table uh, forever. Uh, no. Let's go. Hey, love, you gave me a trust. I give you no yeah. choice. Then it come with instructions. Uh, so 
So with your heart, I taught my game was temporary. Oh, results may vary. I know, I know. I would say the most difficult thing about being an artist is um, being seen and being heard. Um, I know that social media, you have that type of outlet, but you know, you, you just may not reach the person that, um, that you would like to work with. Or um, I just think it is a lot harder for us to just be exposed to a lot of different people. Um, you know, all artists are not TikTokers and all of that. So I think for artists like myself, I just try to do my art and hopefully it's seen by the right people. Yeah, this is Hey Girl. Yeah. Party all the time. Oh, hey girl, you say, oh girl. Hey girl, I wanna rock the world. When I say, hey girl, you say, oh girl. Hey girl, hey girl. Baby, I don't need to tell ya. I'm sure you heard it all before. I heard it all before. Whatever game you're playing is going. Hey, hey girl, just saying. I need a number yours and your mama's. I mean, whoever I got us. Your friends could be my friends. We can be friends. I used to party all the time. I never gave real love a try. What you doing for the rest of your life and how can I get invited? I got a plan for something exciting. I got a plan hey girl, exciting. Ooh. Should we make it so exciting? Or jump to the white picket fence, you got it. How about we get this started? If I can do a duet with one artist, that artist would be Michael Jackson. Um, just because he's crazy with just his recording process. Um, his harmonies are always very close. His breath control is crazy. He also uses different types of voices, which um, 
I've learned from him through this entire process. So I would say Michael Jackson. I would love to let him see what he taught me. Some of my musical influences are Michael Jackson, um, Usher, Chris Brown, Brandy, Brian McKnight, Joe, um, Whitney Houston, a lot of the greats, um, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye. The one thing I love about R&B is just the feeling of just um, just how it make you feel. The, the, the music, the lyrics, um, just the vibe of the song, just, just how you feel. Yeah. When you hear my music, you're definitely going to get me. You'll feel my energy. Um, the words I'm talking about is always sincere. I don't talk about popping bottles and doing all of that. For the most part, it's just always just genuine love, emotion, and um, just feeling, yeah.